Do clothes make the keto bore? Clothing may not make the person, but in today's episode of Let's Talk About It, we'll discuss how it can be a contributing factor in unmaking a person. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. Now I know it's a little strange to be talking about clothing and like outward appearance when I'm wearing cat ears. If you're waiting for a time where you're not wearing something weird to talk about the clothes we wear, we're never gonna get this video done. This is very true. So this is a very important topic. So today we're gonna discuss five reasons why what you're wearing can actually work against you. I know it sounds crazy and it doesn't seem like a keto topic, but I am telling you what, what you're wearing is going to affect your health goals. Well, let's start off with number one. The sad feelings in yesterday's pants are still in yesterday's pockets. Absolutely, that was so true for me. I can still remember the pair of jeans that I wore to a PTA meeting at Caleb's school. And it was at that meeting that I looked around and realized that all of the other moms in the room were totally fit and way skinnier than me. And I thought to myself, I don't fit in here. And I actually made a decision in those jeans not to get involved at Caleb's school because of the way that I looked. And I held on to those jeans way too long. I can remember the victory I felt when I finally donated them. Well, I had one where I had one of my customers give me a bunch of like these really nice Tommy Bahama shirts. And they were all like Hawaiian shirts with fish and everything. And I loved them and they fit me. So it made me feel really good because they were all double extra larges. They were really big. But the problem is I liked them so much. I left them in the closet even after I lost my weight. But then every time I would like go through my photos on my phone, I would see pictures of me when I weighed almost 300 pounds wearing those shirts. And then I would open up the closet and I would see that shirt and it would make me think, you're still a fat guy. Look, the shirt's sitting right there. Failure. It took me like six months after losing 100 pounds to finally get rid of those. And I'm telling you, you need to throw that stuff out now because every time you see those different clothes, I mean, save like maybe one outfit to watch yourself grow and hide it though. Don't leave it hanging in your closet. But the problem is every time you open up your closet and you see those clothes, you're reminding yourself subconsciously, you used to be a fat person. Or you're even worse, you're saying to yourself, you're still a fat person. See, there's the proof. So number two. Either you are gonna decide where the skin is going to go or gravity is. And gravity is a jerk. And that was especially true for me. I maintained the same undergarments I mean, TMI, that I used to have when I was 100 pounds heavier, and I was just like filling them up with skin. I was just, it was going down, down, down. You've got to direct the skin where you want it to go, even if that means sleeping in a bathing suit. I needed to just keep it all in. The thing is, is the clothes that you wear are going to make you feel good. That's why you need to wear clothes that actually fit. People ask me all the time, like, why do you wear skinny jeans? Well, first of all, because I can, right? I never was able to wear those when I was younger and when I was really heavy. So now that I can, I wear them. But here's the thing, they make me feel good. When I was wearing those big baggy jeans, the problem is, is like all the rolls would start coming out and you would see it kind of bouncing around. You know, it's the same thing like with your shirts and stuff. If you're wearing like really baggy clothes and if, as you're starting to lose weight, you know, the fat doesn't come off evenly. Sometimes it's gonna leave little pockets and eventually you'll get rid of those. But if you have these like rolls, you don't want them just kind of hanging out. You wanna like be able to tuck them down and keep everything nice and tight. It's gonna make you feel better. It's really good for your self-esteem. It's true. So number three, if there's room to grow, 
there's room to grow. It is so true. And I know that it's important to save money. I am a thrifty person. And a lot of times I don't want to spend money on new clothes because I'm thinking I'll just keep what I've got and save a bunch of cash. But you want to get rid of these clothes. Yeah. I know you may want to save the clothes because of money or something like that. But the problem is you're giving yourself an opportunity to fill back in on your clothes. So my entire life, I was obese. So I always had my closet divided into separate sections. I had this section was my extra large shirts. This section was my double extra large shirts. And this section over here, these were like things that I can throw over all of that to hide it when even the double extra larges didn't fit. Yeah. Then my jeans, I would keep in my closet whatever size I was actually wearing. For example, say a size 38. But then in my drawer, I kept 40s, 42s, and even 44s. Why? Because I knew my entire life I was a yo-yo dieter. So what would happen is, is I would gain the weight and then I could just go into the closet or into the drawer and grab the size that fits. The problem with that is now you have a place to go back. It took me a long time to throw out those 38s, the 40s, the 42s, but I finally did. And as I started losing weight and I got into 36s and 34s, I would start throwing it out. So once I got to the 34s, everything got thrown out. And I said, now I can only go one way. So now in my closet, I only have 30s and 32s. And I honestly don't want to go shopping. So there's only one thing I can do, lose weight or stay where I'm at because I'm not gonna go buy those 34s. But if I did have the 34s, it wouldn't really matter. So number four. New colors and patterns can be a scaffold for a brighter outlook and new patterns of behavior. This is especially true if you were like me and you never wore stripes when you were heavy. I thought that stripes were off limits to me. I also didn't think that you could wear bright colors. Everything in my closet was black because black made you look skinnier. That's what I had been told. So I didn't have any patterns and I didn't have any colors and it was quite depressing. It looked like I was Johnny Cash, you know, are you always going to a funeral? Well, maybe I am because I never was able to wear something light and bright. And I think you can tell that I'm a pretty big personality. It's okay for me to wear some bright colors. Yeah. And we talked about for me before, you know, I had the skinny jeans and I never wore that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, 90% of my clothes were actually just what Rachel likes to call my ball shorts. So they're basically basketball shorts. And why I like them is you have elastic. So when you would put them on, you didn't realize how big you actually were. They can stretch a long way, right? So I wore that most of the time. But as I lost weight, the next thing I know, I just wanted to wear jeans because I could never wear them before. So I started buying jeans. Also, the clothes that I really wore a lot of before were things like polo shirts because I felt like they were comfortable. You can hide kind of all the fat in them. But as I lost the weight, I switched over to wearing t-shirts and a lot of like button up shirts because they're more slimming and they made me feel good about myself. So number five. New clothes are tagged with new goals. So as Rachel and I were losing weight, we made the decision that every time we hit one of our goals, we were going to reward ourselves. But instead of rewarding ourselves with going out to eat or having a bowl of ice cream like we used to when we would lose weight, yeah, come on, you know the feeling, right? Hey, I lost 10 pounds. I deserve a bowl of ice cream. Exactly. What we decided we would do is every time we hit a goal, we would go clothes shopping. So we would now be at this one size and be like, hey, I get to go buy a smaller size now. Now, once you get those smaller sizes, you have two options. Number one, you can try to maintain, and everybody I think knows that I don't believe there's any such thing as maintenance. You're either going up or you're going down. The other option you have though, is to actually set a new goal and try to get a little bit smaller. Number one, if you have that goal, even if you don't get smaller, you're actively trying to go down so at least you won't go up. The other thing is you get to reward yourself again when you get to that next goal. And let me tell you, getting new clothes is only half of the reward because for me, the biggest victory was having a shopping and buying experience where you weren't miserable going into the dressing room and getting to try on new clothes and buy new things. It was so exciting. It made me feel very hopeful and it was taking back what the previous shopping experience robbed me of, which was self-esteem and a hope for the future. That even happened for me because prior to losing all of the weight, I hated shopping. Not only did I hate shopping, 
I hated it when anybody would buy me clothes. Like Rachel and her mom, they would say like, what size are you for Christmas? I'm like, I don't want presents. Just don't even buy, if you're buying me clothes, I don't want any presents. I'd rather not have anything because number one, I don't want anybody to know what my size is. And number two, if it didn't fit, it made me feel even worse. Once I lost the weight, I actually enjoyed going shopping with Rachel once in a while. So we actually have one more, a bonus one. So our advice is dress in a tailored way because it is very important to know that people care about you. Now I want you to think about when you dress up in a tailored way, it almost compels people to say, wow, you look really nice. And if you know somebody who always dresses super tailored, then when they look a little bit disheveled or things are out of order, it almost compels you to say, is everything all right? You sort of check in with them. Right. Back when I was wearing nothing but a uniform of oversized t-shirts and pajama pants, there was no way for me to indicate to Joe, something is wrong, you need to check in with me. And it wasn't his fault for not checking in with me because I wasn't giving him any barometer for letting him know that something may be up. Well, that's gonna be our video for today. If you like seeing different types of videos like this, check out our complete playlist, which you're gonna find right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're gonna find right over here. But whether you head this way or head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.